Hello, everybody. My name is Jennifer Heiselman, and I am the Infonet Manager at the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority, or ICJA. And today I'll be going over for you um, our training on the newly implemented feature on the domestic violence Infonet version for client needs and client updates. I'm going to share my screen and let's get into it. Um, before we do so, I want to go over some kind of overall general points. Um, one, to give you a little context, these efforts were made part by a federal grant that ICJ received from the Federal Office for Victims of Crime, or the same agency that administers VOCA dollars. The two primary objectives of the grant were one, to improve Infonet's capacity to collect and report data on more tangible, meaningful service outcomes among the clients that you serve. And we had been hearing this from you all for a number of years about how you wished that Infonet could do a better job of this. There is some tools in there now um, with the service outcome section, but we heard that you were hoping for more um, tangible and meaningful service outcomes. And then the second goal was to include reports for specific funders, specifically HUD, and then also OVC, what they call a performance measurement tool or PMT. Most of you won't need to do that. Um, and that uh, trainings on those reports are in another recording if you're interested in viewing those. Um, today we are covering what you see as the highlighted objective about using the features that help improve Infonet's overall capacity to demonstrate more meaningful outcomes. And there were two new features um, to help with this objective. One, you will see a completely new and redesigned client needs section. And then secondly, you now have the ability in Infonet to update your client's intake data over multiple time points, and that's all while preserving the original intake data. Um, I also wanted to mention that the features I'm demonstrating for you all today were informed by an advisory group made up of domestic violence provider staff from different parts of the state and different types of programs. Um, some of you that were on that advisory group may be watching this, and thank you for your time and expertise. Um, so this group, we together, we came up with the new categories that you'll see as the client needs, as well as their definitions, and also decided which client intake fields we would deem updatable. Um, also, I want to point out that none of the features you see today will, they're not mandated by any funder that we are aware of. That includes ICJA, uh, DHS. ICADV and the Chicago Department of Family and Support Services. In fact, none of these funders even have access to these data um, with the exception of IC just Infonet team. But remember, we are not grant monitors, um, so we can't see your data, but only for the purpose of helping you and providing technical assistance and helping you use Infonet um, in the most useful way possible. Um, finally, you will also note that um, reports to pull the data out that I'll be demonstrating for you today are not available yet. Um, we have just incorporated the data entry pieces, but there are no reports yet that exist to pull all this out. Um, we will be recruiting volunteers to serve on a group to advise us on how that report should be designed and what kinds of data points that reports uh, should display in ways that are most helpful and meaningful to you. Um, so if you are interested in serving on that group, please reach out to me. Um, it will likely require your participation in probably between two and four meetings sometime between February and June. So we can try and get those reports available to users um, sometime this year. Okay, so with that, I am going to move on to Infonet itself to demonstrate the new features. So I am going to add a new adult and I am going to enter pretty complete data in here just so you can see. Um, I'm going to skip some areas for the sake of time. But I'm going to try and be as complete as possible because you want that data complete in order to properly demonstrate, especially the client updates piece. OK, 
Okay, I am going to say this is an adult client that came in. I'm going to go back in time a little bit. So we have room to add updated information. So this client's first contact date is November 1st. And I'm just going to enter data in for these other fields. For employment, I'm going to say they are not employed, something to note for later. Um, I am also indicating this survivor is pregnant. I'm going to indicate yes for pregnant, and this person has one child. I'm only going to enter primary presenting issue at this time for the sake of time. Um, for income, I'm just going to say this client has no financial resources, nor does she have any non cash benefits or health insurance. Just going to check anything for this and leave the referred to blank. I'm going to say no special needs. I am going to skip residence because it takes a minute or two and we don't need that for this demonstration. Now, here we are at the client needs section. You can see I have these all these needs and they're broken down into broader categories. So the safety area has crisis intervention, safety planning and security. And then if you hover over this little I right here, you'll see the definition of that need appear. Um, so there, there should be no question as to what the need entails. And then if your client has any of these needs around the, the first point of contact with them or their intake, you would simply check continuing new need. Um, because this is the first time we're entering needs data for this client, you might wonder why it doesn't just say new need here, um, but we had to make this column label reflect not only first needs assessment, but subsequent one, ones as well. And so this, you could read this column label as continuing or new need. And for this particular client, I'm just going to check four needs. I'm gonna check, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do, I'm, I might check more than four needs. Okay, and again, I wanted to mention just generally this section now replaces what you formerly saw as the services needed and received section, um, because not only are we able to enter here what services or what needs this client has at the point of intake, but you'll be able to enter later data at multiple points in time, um, how and if these needs were addressed. Okay, so I'm actually going to check five needs. Crisis intervention, safety planning, and even though my domestic violence program does not provide health care, I suppose that none of you do either. Sometimes you help the client identify the need for health care, and you may help that survivor go receive health care somewhere. Maybe you help them find a place that they feel comfortable with that's in the area that can uh, likely meet the needs, whatever it is they have. So if your client has a need for health care, you can go ahead and check that box. Um, and my point here is these needs are simply what are your client's needs? Um, they're not necessarily aligned with, with service categories. Um, a lot of them do um, are very similar to our service categories, but you're simply trying to answer the question, is this need a, a present need for your client at that point in time? So I'm gonna check healthcare. And then I'm also going to, I'm gonna pretend this is a client that is a victim of physical domestic violence at this point in time. Um, She's maybe debating whether or not to report the incident to police. So I'm helping her kind of understand what those options are. So I'm going to check criminal justice. And then this person is also considering an order of protection and I'm giving her information about those options. So I'm also going to check legal 
order of protection. So overall, I have five needs checked for this client. Um, and then if I scroll down a little further, you'll see the last section here is program enrollment. Um, and this isn't relevant to this particular training, but I do want to point it out because it's part of intake. There will be a separate recorded training on this, but the, the most important point I want you all to know now is that we had to add this section specifically for HUD grantees um, if, that are receiving rapid rehousing program funding. If you are not one of those programs, I would recommend leaving this section completely blank. I know you'll see an asterisk here, which typically means that a field is required in order to save a record. And that's true, but that's you need to fill in the program type in order to save a program enrollment record. You do not need to enter anything in this section whatsoever in order to successfully save a client. You can leave it uh, blank before clicking save. And we do think this will be a helpful feature for everybody, which is why everybody can see it. But for now, it's most important to those particular grantees. Um, so stay tuned for more information. Again, you may skip it for now, unless you are a rapid rehousing program. Um, and if that's the case and you have questions, please reach out. So I have entered all my needs. I'm gonna go ahead and save this new adult client. Oops, I forgot to enter race and ethnicity. So I'm going to finish that and then try saving again. Okay, so I have saved my client that came in on November 1st with all this intake information. Now, between November 1st and you know the next several weeks, if not months, I am going to be entering services on this client. Um, particularly, they'll probably be services to address the needs that I indicated in their first needs assessment. I'm not going to go ahead and demonstrate entering services for you because I presume you all know how to do that. Um, if you don't, there'll be a separate training on that. Um, but I'm going to go right ahead and pretend it is sometime later. And I'm going to add an update for this person. So we're going to now pre pretend it's December 1st, 30 days have gone by. I've provided this person services. So I have just clicked on the client updates, which is a new selection available over here along the right hand menu. And when I do that, I can see this client doesn't have any update records, but they do have their client intake. The check boxes here or the check marks rather simply indicate that data for these sections have been completed. And I did, I entered data in this person's demographic section. I checked an income uh, amount, or I checked that she had no financial resources. Um, I checked data in all five of these sections. So they are all showing as complete. Now I'm going to add a new update for December 1st. And to do that, I'm going to click this new client update button. And when you're entering the update date, know that we set a, um, a validation on this field where the update date must be at least two weeks after the last date or intake. In this case, it was intake. And our client's first contact date or intake was November 1st. So I am going to make this update for 30 days later. Um, but let's see what happens. If I enter only 10 days later, November 10th, 23, and I try to save, it's gonna tell me I need to enter at least 14 days after the next most recent record. So again, I'm gonna change this to 12-1. And uh, I am going to say that on this date, we do not have any changes in this client's demographic information or income benefits and note that you can always collapse these sections i know it can make the screen uh, get kind of long 
um, but I'm not going to be making any changes in these sections. So I'm just going to collapse them by clicking this downward pointing arrow until I get to the needs section. Okay, so client needs. I am now updating this survivor's needs. Now, I want to explain all the columns here. Um, notice there are a lot more columns present now that I am adding an update to an existing client versus when we were completing their initial intake client needs record. So conflict, I'm not going to get into that now. I'm going to actually demonstrate that later. But for the for the moment, I will say that Whenever you add the ability to enter records over multiple points in time, it increases the potential for data to conflict with each other. And this is a tool to help you uh, identify when that is happening so you can correct it. Um, that's all I'll say for now. It's easier to demonstrate it. Previous need, this column is recalling back to my last intake or my last record, whether that's initial intake or a more or a recent update record I created. Um, this is only the second time we're updating or actually the first time we're updating compared to their first intake record. Um, so this column is displaying information from the last needs assessment I did, which was November 1st. Remember, I checked five needs, um, crisis intervention, safety planning, I checked health care, and then I also checked criminal justice and then order of protection. And all of these, all five of these needs display yes under previous need because that was a need the last time I did an assessment with this particular survivor. All the other needs display as no um, because I didn't check those as needs for this client back on November, November 1st. Um, the internal and external columns, and I, I think in retrospect, we could have labeled these a little more clearly so you understand what they mean. Um, so we will try to work on that. But for each previous need where the yes is indicated, I'm gonna start with crisis intervention. The internal and external box, as well as this external agency, are all enabled. If at the last needs assessment, the client did not have a particular need, they're all grayed out. So you can consider all three of these columns, internal, external, and agency, as a way to describe whether or not the need your client had at the last assessment has been addressed. And if it has been addressed, in what ways has it been addressed? Uh, one option is through services that are provided by my, my organization. So last time this client had a need for crisis intervention. Um, was that need addressed? I'm going to say yes, it was addressed because I provided this person with crisis intervention counseling services. So I'm going to check the internal box because again, this need was addressed through internal services from our organization. And I am going to leave the external box unchecked because that would refer to any outside organization within the community, maybe a community partner or just another social service program in your community or criminal justice, legal, healthcare, any outside organization that helped your client address this particular need you could check that if that were the case. I'm going to leave it unchecked for now. Um, safety planning, I'm also going to check internal for that because I was able to help address this client's need for safety planning through services. And I'm also going to identify safety planning as a continuing or new need uh, because we all know just because a need is addressed, it doesn't mean it's not still a need. You might have to address a need continuously for a long period of time. Um, now, I'm going to go down to the healthcare need. And for this particular need, our agency doesn't provide healthcare, but I help this client find another organization in the community that could provide that could address that particular need. So in this case, I'm going to leave the internal box unchecked 
and I'm going to check the external box because this client was able to find a healthcare provider she felt comfortable with and went to get treated for her injuries. Um, so I am going to just find some healthcare organization on here. Here we go, health department. Um, and this external agency, so you can select the specific agency or organization in your community that helped your client address that need. Um, and this external agency drop down menu is tied to your local agency list, uh, which is editable. You can add new options. So all these, these drop down menus for one domestic violence program will look different than on the, another domestic violence program because you have control over what appears in this drop down menu. Um, if I also helped link the person to this healthcare organization and helped her explore options, this might be an instance where this need was addressed with both internal services from my program as well as from a community partner. So, in, sometimes you would check both these boxes. And I'm going to also pretend this client's healthcare needs have been fully addressed, in which case the continuing or new need box will remain unchecked. Then I'm going to scroll down to my other two needs, criminal justice and legal order of protection. I'm going to say these were also met internally with services. Um, the order of protection, I'm going to pretend that I helped them get an emergency OP, but they're going to need continuing help with that um, to try and possibly upgrade the order. So I'm going to indicate that as a continuing need, but the criminal justice, I'm going to say, is no longer in need. So in short, these columns here, previous need, internal, external, and external agency, are all about whether or not this client's needs from the last time were addressed, and if so, how. This last column, continuing slash new need on the far right, is about today, at this point in time. Is this still a need for, for your client? If the answer to that question is yes, you're gonna wanna check that box. If the answer is no, this need is not a, a current need, you're going to leave that unchecked. And then you also want to go through the list of needs and possibly identify new or emerging needs that your client is having. Um, perhaps my client now has a need for individual counseling, so I'm going to mark that as a new need. And then let's say employment advocacy because this client expressed the desire for help with um, getting, getting some type of earned income. So I have addressed all the needs from last time. Um, also note that just because there was a need indicated for your client at the last assessment, it doesn't necessarily mean it always gets addressed. Sometimes you're gonna have situations where the need, the previous need was yes, but there were no services and no outside organizations helping your survivor to address those needs. So sometimes you're just gonna have uh, nothing here and maybe you'll indicate that as a continuing need. Okay, the other point I wanted to mention about this is let's say you noticed that I checked the employment need, right? So I checked, this is a new need, let's say, at the same point in time, um, I also tell my client, you know, I know of this great organization just down the street and they provide help for free on residents that need help updating their resume. So I refer that client to that other organization. Um, I do mark that this is a need for this client, but I'm not going to document any record of that other organization or that referral at this point in time. At this point in time, I'm simply answering the question, is this need present? If the answer is yes, I'm gonna check the box. If the answer is no, I'm gonna leave it unchecked. And that referral, I will document that the next time I do a needs assessment with this client, which I will demonstrate shortly.
Okay, I am going to save this client's new needs assessment. Okay, so I've now saved an updated needs assessment for December 1st or one month after they originally came in. And if I click client updates, I am now gonna see a new record in their summary table. I still see the client intake data. And I also see an updated record for December 1st. Um, and I can see the red check mark means that this is what was updated for this December 1st record. We see black check marks in the other four sections because it's always going to carry the earlier information forward. It's going to assume that that is all the same if you didn't change anything. But the needs, I did update those. So that's why we see a red check mark here. Okay, so at this point in time, I am going to add another update. And this update I'm going to make for 12, 15, 23. And let's say I do my needs assessments with clients on a monthly basis. You all may have different um, practices, but I do my needs assessments monthly. So this is on December 15th. I just did my last assessment on December 1st. So this update is not for a needs assessment. It's for something else. And we're going to pretend this survivor just had her just gave birth to her child. Remember that we indicated she was pregnant at intake. So for my new update record on December 15th, I'm going to she had her baby in early December. So I'm going to change this pregnant from yes to no. I'm also going to change this number of children from one to two. And that is the only update I am going to make. I'm not going to do anything with updated needs because it's not time for her monthly needs assessment. So I'm just going to change those two fields and then click save. And now when I click on client updates to view the summary table again, I will see that for the December 15th record, I changed something about their demographics not the other sections, and I did not do a needs assessment. So it's gonna leave this blank. And this is so that you know, whenever you look at this client uh, summary table, I can tell by looking at this, that my last needs assessment with this person was here on December 1st, because that's where the red check mark is. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate one more update record. So I'm gonna click a new client update and we're gonna pretend it's time for their monthly needs assessment. So for the update, I'm going to enter January 2nd and I'm not going to update any information about demographics. Uh, notice that the, the demographics reflect what was entered the last time. So she's no longer pregnant and now she has two children. But I'm going to skip that. I'm going to leave income alone, benefits, special needs, and now I'm at client needs. Now, remember, I inserted that one update record for December 15th to show she had a baby and she now has two children. Um, so for the needs assessment, but I didn't do a needs assessment on that date. So the previous need column here is referring back not to December 15th, but to when the last needs assessment was on December 1st. So I can see here the safety planning need is checked. I can update that, that was addressed. I'm gonna say individual counseling was addressed through services and that is a continuing need for this person. Um, order of protection. I'll say that was met with services, but is still a need. We still have another court date for that. Now, employment advocacy, we didn't get to that. We didn't provide any services for that, even though it was indicated as a need. Um, and she had a baby, she was pretty busy. So we're gonna say she never, she didn't get a chance yet to utilize that referral that I had showed her to. So this is still a continuing need. And now that she has two children, she also expressed the need for um, 
child care services. So even though that was not a need at the last needs assessment, I'm going to check that that is a new need for today, January 2nd. So I'm going to check all those um, and then I'm going to save. And it's taking a little longer. There we go. And when I click client updates again, I see that there are now, um, there's one more record for January 2nd, 2024. And I can see here that I updated this client's needs assessment. Okay. Um, all right. So now I want to demonstrate for you the conflict column. I promised I would do that. All right, so again, whenever you have data over multiple periods in time, um, it does increase that potential. Also notice that when I click on any of these needs assessments, there is potential for uh, if I went back to an earlier and changed, let's look at the safety planning, okay? Um, we're looking at the January 2nd or the most recent needs assessment. Um, that was a need the last time I did a needs assessment, and then I checked that it was addressed. Um, one thing we decided to do with this is give you the ability to edit earlier updates, even though they're not the most recent. Um, those of you that are familiar with funding for staff in InfoNet, um, you know that it can get pretty dicey if you start editing funding statements that are not the most recent. And it's the same thing that with this. You're allowed to do it, but you want to be extra careful, and I'll show you why. So if I go back to client updates, And instead of the most recent needs assessment, I'm going to go to my December 1st needs assessment. And I'm going to collapse all these so I can just see my needs. And remember safety planning. I'm going to pretend I'm just going to uncheck this as a continuing need from December 1st, which again is not my most recent. I'm going back in time. I'm going to save that information and it is warning me of a potential conflict. It says the edit you are trying to save could conflict with client needs assessment records for later dates. Are you sure you want to proceed? At that point, maybe you want to click no. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Okay, so I have made that change. I'm still on December 1st. I'm going to go back to my most recent needs assessment on January 2nd or roughly 30 days later. And I'm going to scroll down to my client needs section again. And look at this. See, I have a conflict because I indicated this was a need that was addressed between. December 1st and January 2nd, but then I went, um, then I went to the December 1st record and unchecked that need. So there is a conflicting record here now, um, but this just gives you the opportunity to correct it in whatever way you know is accurate, um, rather than uh, let InfoNet do something automatically that could make things even worse. Um, so that is what the conflict column is for, and it is a tool to help you make sure your data are um, accurate and as uh, correct as they can possibly be and that you don't have conflicting data. Okay, so that concludes the demonstration, um, but in closing, I do want to mention, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not completely done yet. Um, I'm going to make this go away now. So to make this conflict go away, I need to go to the next earlier needs assessment. So I'm gonna click client updates again. I'm gonna go back to December 1st. And I'm going to recheck 
that safety planning need as a continuing need. And if I save it, that conflict asterisk will go away when I view my most recent needs assessment. See how it went away? Another way I could have made it disappear is maybe safety planning truly wasn't a need for this person on December 1st. Um, in that case, this would have said no. There would have been the asterisk still here in the conflict column. I could have just unchecked the internal and saved it that way. That would have also removed the conflict indicator. Okay, um, so that does conclude the demonstration, but I do want to go over a couple questions we anticipate you will have, um, but you will undoubtedly probably have more questions. So we do want you to email those questions to cja.infonethelp at illinois.gov. So the first question is, can I delete an update record? And the answer is yes, you can. And to do that, Let's say I just, I entered this by mistake, January 2nd. I wanna go ahead and delete this. I need to click the edit button. This is getting slower the longer I use it. So once that appears, I will need to scroll down all the way to the bottom. There we go. And if I do that, I will see a delete button here. I can check it. It will ask me if I'm sure, but I can click yes. And I have now deleted that update record. Not only can you delete an update record, you can delete any of these update records, even if they're not the most recent. Um, but I would simply caution you before you do that and make sure that you truly do want to delete an earlier record because again that is an instance where it does increase the likelihood of later records being in conflict because if you delete something in between like if i delete this december 1st um, this december 15th is going to have to recall back to november 1st instead of december 1st and sometimes those data points don't always align so you do have the ability to delete any update record you need to, but just make sure that it is truly what you want to do. Okay, so question, another question is, can I add an update record that is not the most recent? Or for example, let's say I have 30 days here between the date of first contact, November 1st and December 1st. Will InfoNet allow me to add an update in between these two dates, even though it's not the most recent? The answer is no. Um, if you wanted to add an update for November 15th, for example, it will not let you do it. You can only enter something that's uh, later than the most recent. So the only way you could do that is by deleting these two more recent records first and then starting back over. Um, because that could just create um, a lot more conflict than you'd probably want to deal with. So um, you aren't able to do that. Uh, another question is, what if I saved a new client without indicating any needs at intake? Um, and then I want to go back and, and add those needs that were present at the point of intake. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. I'm going to bring up. This client right here. Do I have needs for this client? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. For this demo, I'm just going to add a new adult very quickly. I'm going to call it later needs. 
I'm going to do this again very quickly. We're going to say this client came in January 2nd. I'm going to enter minimal data here. Okay, so all I'm going to enter is the bare minimum required to save a new client. I'm going to enter some minimal demographics and then a primary presenting issue to save that client. Notice, now let's say I come back a few days later and I want to finish this data entry. So I pull up this client, I enter in information into the other fields I skipped over, and I go down to the client needs section, and these are all disabled. What am I going to do now? How can I fill those in? Well, we do require you go through an extra couple steps because if we did make this enabled and allow people to just change it that easily, I think we would have a lot of conflicting data, especially if there are a lot of updates after this. So if you want to fill these needs at intake in, you just need to make two extra clicks, basically. You need to click Client Updates, and then you can click this Edit Intake button. And then, when I scroll down to the needs, now I can check whatever needs that client had at intake and I can save it and we have completed the rest of the intake record. Okay, similarly, my last question I want to address is what if I have a client that's been engaged in services for six months, and I've never done a needs assessment on this person, but I would like to, and I would like to enter that in InfoNet. Um, so I'm gonna search for that client. I'm gonna make my search um, range a little bit, going back a little further. So we're gonna say July 1st, 23. And then I'm going to pull up this client right here, a 53 year old female whose first contact date was July 1. Going to view this client. Okay, and then I don't have any needs on this client and I don't wanna do what we just did with the other client because it's now January, it's now early January. This client has been engaged in services for six months. I just wanna add an update to this client's records showing that we're now starting to do needs assessments. So I will click client updates in this client's record. This is Romeo. Sometimes he wants to help. Romeo, give me just a few minutes. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a new update for January 2nd. Because January 2nd, 24 was when I started to provide um, needs assessments for this person. So I've got 1, 2, 24. And now because I'm entering this after, well after a person's first point of contact with the program, I want to ignore all these columns because this is my first record. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check what needs this person has on, on January 2nd. I'm going to save my record. And now I have a needs assessment for this person. It's six months later than when she first came in or he came in, but that's perfectly fine. And then I can continue adding more updates or more needs assessment as I find necessary. Okay, so those are the questions we wanted to address. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And in closing, I just want to say um, a few things. One, this is a very new section. It's very complex. Um, it's not going to be perfect, especially for the first six months, maybe even longer. Um, but we'll get better the more we do it. Some of you don't even want to touch it. That's totally okay. It's simply a tool for you if you want to use Infonet to help help you demonstrate uh, more outcome measures among the clients that you serve and be able to make statements such as of the 100 
Survivors enrolled in our economic empowerment program. 75% were able to increase their resources, whether by getting a job or accessing public benefits, securing health care coverage. Um, that is the sole incentive for these tools being available to you. And because they're complex, um, it's going to be a little clunky at first. And we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear your questions. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and I wanted to remind everybody that we're seeking volunteers to serve on a group to help design reports to pull these important data out. So again, please reach out to me. I actually am going to share my screen one more time. So you have important contact information. Um, okay, here's what I wanted. So if you are interested in being on that advisory group for re reports, please reach out to me. You could also reach out to InfoNet Help, but um, I'm the one that's going to be coordinating that. So uh, you're probably better off emailing me directly um, to view any other trainings for InfoNet 3.0. Please check out this new website, a new public website. I am going to go there right now to show you what it looks like. Um, and all the recorded trainings, it's not here now as I'm showing it, but it will be if you click resources and then user info and resources, you'll find all kinds of helpful tools here. Um, the training recordings are going to be posted right here and you'll just be able to click on those. Um, so please check out our new public website. Um, and finally, Intake forms to accommodate these new features are not ready yet, but we are working on them. So I appreciate your patience. Um, a couple of you have actually already designed your own and have shared them with me. Thank you so much. I may be borrowing from those. Um, and once those are complete, we will also post these on the same page you see under data collection entry forms. So, um. Keep an eye out for that. Thank you for your attention today. And again, please reach out with any questions, suggestions, or feedback. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.